Hello everyone, <clears throat> this is Jim uh, Viktor Michalevsky for online uh, chesslessons.net. This DVD series is a Gambit guide. So let me start with uh, what uh, Gambit is and quote uh, Wikipedia. A Gambit from ancient Italian Gambetto meaning tripping is a chess opening in which a player most often white, sacrifices a material, usually a pawn, with the hope of achieving a resulting advantageous position. In the first DVD uh, I am going to talk about the King's Gambit, or you can say the King of the Gambit. Two first moves which determine uh, this old opening are e4, e5, f4. White sacrifices a pawn early in the game in order to take the center with his d pawn. The main drawback of this gambit is weakening of the e1 h4 diagonal. Usually the best way to meet gambits is to accept them. And so I am going to offer to your attention the move e takes f4. The so called king's gambit accepted. In this position, white has a few options, uh, which has a major uh, uh, difference. White can either afford queen h4 check or play knight f3 and prevent it. The main, uh, the two main options are bishop c4, the so-called uh, the bishop's gambit. The main uh, purpose of this move is to create pressure along the a to g diagonal and in particular on the f7 pawn. From the other hand, black is allowed to play queen h4 check and white uh, loses his right to castle. From the other hand, the queen on h4 will get under attack of the white's knight after knight f3. So before offering the uh, the most uh, safe line for black, I would like to show you uh, some dangerous black faces in uh, in the queen h4 line. So after queen h4, white plays king f1 and b5. The point of this uh, counter sacrifice is to deflect the white's light squared bishop from the f7 square. Bishop takes b5, knight f6, knight f3, attacking the queen, so the queen has to go back, queen h6, and in fact we arrived at the position which uh, has been known since the immortal game Anderson Kizeritsky which we're gonna see now. It's, uh, it's very important to know the, uh, the most uh, classical games in uh, each of the openings you play. And so uh, let's see how that game continued. Anderson played d3, opening the diagonal of his uh, dark squared bishop. Knight h5. This is an interesting idea. Uh, black creates a threat of knight g3 check, exploiting a pin along the h-file. 
After this move both the king on f1 and the rook on h1 will be under attack. When in case of h takes g3, black is going to capture the rook on h1. But white answered it with a really nice move, knight h4. First of all, white uh, prevents knight g3 check. And second, he wants to bring his knight to f5 and attack black's queen on h6. So black played queen g5 with a double attack on b5 and h4. White answered this move with knight f5, saving both minor pieces. c6. Black is attacking the bishop on b5 and unpinning his d pawn. And suddenly white ignored the threat of c takes b5 and played g4. A clever move. And Passan is uh, impossible. Because the f pawn is pinned by the white's dark squared bishop. So black has to retreat with the knight to f6. In case of c takes b5, g takes h5, white is gonna play rook g1, putting pressure along the g file. So uh, knight f6. Now both the bishop on b5 and the g4 pawn are under attack. But white ignores the threat of c takes b5 again with rook g1. And this is a clever peace sacrifice. c takes b5. Black accepts the challenge. h4. Attacking the queen. And suddenly the, the queen on g5 starts feeling very uncomfortable there. Queen g6 is the only retreat. h5. Forcing the queen to g5. And then queen f3. White creates a simple threat of bishop takes f4. And after this move the queen on g5 will be trapped. So in order to save the queen, black plays knight g8. His idea is to escape with the queen along the d8 h4 diagonal. Bishop takes f4, the queen goes to f6. Probably it would be safer to go uh, all the way back to d8. But black decided to attack the b2 pawn. Knight c3. Simple and strong. White is just bringing his knight to d5, from where it's going to attack the queen on f6, and also the knight may get to c7 creating a double attack or a fork on e8 and a8. Now you can see a, a huge development uh, advantage. Most of the white species are already in the game, while black species, most of the black species are in the initial position. Bishop c5. Finally, black starts developing his minor pieces. Attacking the rook on the way. But it seems that uh, Anderson doesn't care much about the rooks and 
play this intermediate move knight d5 attacking the queen on f6 queen takes b2 and then comes one of the most uh, uh, brilliant uh, and well-known uh, combinations in the chess history bishop d6 white sacrifices two rooks for attack black accepts the challenge queen takes a1 king e2 bishop takes g1 probably black's play uh, can be improved at some point but uh, uh, in our case it doesn't uh, matter much e5 disconnecting the queen on a1 from the g7 pawn and thus creating a threat of knight takes g7 the pawn on g7 cannot be protected and so black develops his uh, queen's knight in order to cover the c7 square and then white comes with knight takes g7 check the only retreat is king d8 and then queen f6 check a nice final touch white sacrifices his queen and after knight takes f6 checkmates black king with bishop e7 A brilliant win of uh, Anderson, and uh, the game was uh, called the Immortal Game, and entered the history of the uh, of the chess uh, game.